welcome to my channel. This video is to do with my health and what is happening over the next few months. I need a hip replacement, something that I'm not looking forward to. To be honest, I'm terrified. The thought of someone cutting me open and sawing my bones does not appeal in the least. That is from the surgeon showing me what they actually do. I went to see him oh, six weeks ago and he put up my x-rays and he said, well, it looks like we need to replace your hip. He said that, as you can see, there are some bone spurs. I have uh, a couple, one on one side of the I guess the ball and one on the other side he said you can see where it's wearing down and it's getting quite close to the cup I said yes I actually feel that occasionally if I lean forward and I'm writing and then I go to stand up I can feel it catch he said yes so he said that he's not going to do the titanium he said he'd prefer to do the ceramic because of my age I'm young and it will last a lot longer he explained how they do it, what they do. I came away from there thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to be soaring and drilling. And it wasn't until someone said to me, well, actually, you do realize that the thigh bone is hollow. They, they will actually put that in, but they will use like a mallet or something to bang it in place. And I'm thinking, oh, please stop. So yeah, I am very very terrified yet I'm also aware that it needs doing. I got a appointment from the dietitian who I went to see last Friday because she wanted to see what my eating habits were like, whether I had any eating disorders, what she could do to help me. Orthopedics have said that they would like me down to 40 BMI. At the moment I'm at 42.1. She said that's not a lot. She said we just need to get you down to 106 kgs. Or at the moment I'm 113.2 kgs. What is really gutting for me is that I was at 108 kgs in December of last year. So that's how much weight I have gained. Going forward, I am going to work extremely hard to shift not only the 8 kgs, but I want to get below 100. If I can get to 90, I will be ecstatic. Before I tell you what I'm going to do, the questions she asked me were, when you eat, how do you feel? And I said, well, I feel like I'm about 80% full. I don't want to go any higher than that. She said, okay. She said, leaving something on your plate is fine. She said, how do you feel 25 to 30 minutes later? And I said, I actually feel satiated. Like I can feel that there's food in there that I'm comfortable. I'm I'm not full, full. She said, that's good. That's that's the 80%. And I thought, oh, good. I finally managed to work out what the right feeling is inside. She said, the next one is full. Then there is over full. And then there is stuffed to the point where it hurts and you either are sick or feel close to being sick. She said, have you ever been there? And I said, the overstuffed, wanting to be sick through my childhood, from as far back as I can remember, that feeling was part of my life until I turned 15 and, well, I was nearly 16 actually, and I left school. I got my first job. Then when I got my second job, I actually started to eat a healthy, well, a healthier lifestyle, uh, and it was Weight Watchers back then, thanks to the woman that I used to babysit her twins. And I got close to goal by the time I was 17. Then she asked me what my relationship with food was like, and I sort of didn't understand what she meant, and she said, you know, your eating habits. And I said, well, I had that overstuffed feeling, and then 
through my marriage I wouldn't eat until 4.35 o'clock and then I would have my main meal or first meal of the day with my family and then I would graze until bedtime. So she said, you're the classic restrictor binger. I said, yes. She asked if I do that now and I said, no, I haven't done that in, oh, a good eight, nine years. That has taken a back seat. I don't want to ever go back there. There are occasions where I will go out. I won't eat, but I've had breakfast. So I'll come home and I may miss lunch or lunch Lunch will be late, but I will have my lunch. Then she asked me what I have for breakfast, what I have for lunch, and what I have for dinner. I told her what I do. I also said to her that with breakfast, I have three different breakfasts that I, I pull from. There is the fourth, but I'm not putting that one in just yet because I don't want it to be a trigger because it's rice cakes. The lunch is usually just two different variations and then dinner is usually just a mix of different vegetables and a protein. Vegetables, some are cooked, some are raw. That can be whichever protein I like and whichever vegetable combination. So she was happy with that. She asked a few more questions of which I am not 100% sure Oh, she did explain to me about how they do hydrotherapy. When I'm on the waiting list, no one sort of knows where I will where I will come up. Only the surgeon does. Then I go and I see another raft of medical personnel. So it's quite a lengthy process. I think doing it in steps is going to help calm me, keep my mind from throwing in stories like our heads tend to do at times but one thing I do know for sure is that it is not going to send me into a tailspin because I am responsible for what I put in my mouth. No one else. My mother no longer has carte blanche to do that. That is where that is. She gave me a 10 steps to a healthy weight, which is this. It has got three, four different breakfast ideas, lunch ideas, dinner ideas. I thought that I may actually do some of these and record them because, you know, not everybody eats one way people eat a different way when i read this i thought this is really healthy i'm going to give it a go and see how i go i'm not going to throw caution to the wind if there is any form of sugar in there i'm not going to make that recipe if there is a little flour like i'm not sure about the keto breads I would, have, I would have to look at the bread angle first before I even attempted to do the likes of baked beans on toast plus either a banana or an orange. That, that's a breakfast. I am looking at those sorts of things before I even contemplate it. But I thought it'd be interesting to show what other sort of breakfasts and lunches and dinners that people can do and it might help someone else out there and I'm going to continue with my habit stacking. As you would have seen I have uploaded my first habit stack for the week which I'm going to work through. I'm going to do that for a month and then when that I know that that is firmly in place I'm going to add another habit stack. I have added in some exercise which I do on my recumbent bike and I'm going to add in some swimming. The swimming I will put in place in four weeks. So that is the next habit stack I want to do. I just need to work out what day that is going to fit in. I'm hoping that I can do it on the Monday 
which is my day off. At present, I am down a housekeeper. So I am adamant I do not want to give up my Monday, um, and I'm not going to because that is the day that I do what I need to do. I do not want to do it on a Friday because Friday, it's everywhere is packed. I would rather have my Monday off. I find my week works a lot easier when I follow that plan. So that is where I'm at. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share if you think there is someone out there who may benefit from my journey going forward. And I will catch you in my next video. Take care. Bye.